All right. Hello again. Um, the purpose of today's video is to ask ourselves this. Why would a patient need an assistive device? Well, um, there's several reasons why a patient would need an assistive device. And the first one, you know, would be to decrease their weight bearing. Anybody that's sustained a fracture, a ligament injury, or undergone some type of orthopedic surgery, they could, uh, uh, they'll have pain with weight bearing, or weight bearing on that lower extremity might, uh, um, impair their ability to heal and so decreased weight bearing is one of the primary reasons so to, in order to protect, protect the lower extremity you know or the pelvis um, also to improve their balance you, you're studying in biomechanics the concept of a base of support and so when a patient stands up they have to have some degree of balance front uh, front and back side to side um, and so an assistive device would help them improve their base of support and help them maintain their center of gravity within that base of support and the final one is mobility um, in order to improve someone's mobility, um, they may be inefficient or it requires a lot of work in order for them to uh, uh, ambulate. And so an assistive device gives them a little bit of boost and so it can get a greater range uh, and improve their safety in doing that. If we take a look at um, someone's uh, mobility from high to low, uh, I'm sorry, from low to high here and then from low to high on their independence, um, you know, our ability to uh, move and be independent here, most of us are right up around here in a normal healthy state, but it wouldn't take much, you know, for you to kind of come down this curve. An injury, an illness, a hospitalization, you know, you may need a cane or you might need a set of crutches, a walker, a wheelchair, or a parallel bars. And the job of a physical therapist is really to move a patient up that curve and help them to uh, ambulate or move uh, more independently and safely. Some of the indications for use for uh, an assistive device is first and foremost a diagnosis that's going to affect mobility. It might be a neurologic, neurological diagnosis like a CVA or a cerebrovascular accident, uh, spinal cord injury, cerebral palsy, a number of different ones, um, as well as orthopedic injuries. So anything affecting mobility. Also pain with mobility. If it hurts to put weight down on your foot or your ankle or your knee, um, then that's an indication for an assistive device. Also, if somebody is a fall risk, uh, poor balance, um, you know, that's a good indication. Is that if a provider would think that the use of an assistive device, be it a walker or a cane, would help them in, uh, decrease their fall risk, great indication for use. Some factors you're going to be able to, or you're going to have to consider as you do this, uh, their performance. As you watch them walk, as you watch them transfer, you know, you see their base of support and you, you just evaluate how they do to determine their safety, their level of independence, and the type of assistance you could give them. The, those are some things you can consider. What things are in their home, whether it be stairs, uh, rugs, carpeting, you know, steps, uh, those are those are things that you're going to have to consider. You're going to have to ask your patient, talk to their family, and uh, um, and ask about. Also, their occupation as well as their goals. What is it that they do, and what is it that they want to do? These are all things that you're going to have to kind of put together into the mix and make a good decision on exactly what it is you're going to provide for your patient. So for safety, um, first and foremost, is your patient? Ask yourself this: Is your patient oriented? Are they alert? Uh, do you know who you are? What is, what's the date today? Uh, what time is it right now? And this, the way we can document that is A and O times three or A and O to PPT or person, place, or time. You know, those are important things for you to be able to establish. Don't just assume that the patient is oriented if they're talking to you. You know, make sure that you, you do this. Um, their ambulatory status prior to their current episode of care. Uh, for example, an 18-year-old who needs a set of crutches status post an ACLR, you could uh, uh, pretty much presume, uh, you would certainly ask, but you would presume that that individual was walking prior to them having this surgery. However, if you had a 50-year-old female with a history of MS or multiple sclerosis who at home uses a rolling walker and now she's been hospitalized for three days due to an acute flare of her MS, Right? You're, you probably shouldn't consider using crutches on her. She's going to have to use at least the device that she was using prior to coming in uh, to the hospital for that episode of care. And so making sure that you understand what it was that they were using prior to coming to see you, if anything. Next, uh, for safety, their sit, their stand, and their static balance. Can a patient sit up straight and maintain their balance? 
If they can do that, can they stand up from a chair and then maintain their balance while you're standing there talking to them? Um, other comorbid conditions that they may have, upper and lower extremity injuries. If you are using a set of crutches for a lower extremity injury, if you happen to have a fractured hand, that's going to be difficult. And so you're going to have to plan through that and see what modifications you can make to that crutch in order to facilitate mobility here without injuring the hand. Um, other things, you're really going to have to screen a patient's strength while they're sitting there in the chair. What's their upper extremity like? Biceps, triceps, grip strength, because those are the things that they're going to require to use in order to um, manipulate some of these uh, uh, assistive devices. Alright, that's it.